That's okay. Aloha. My name is Michael Kumukau Ohali. I'm a native Hawaiian cultural practitioner. Kahuna Lapa'au Okekai Olimo, which is the practitioner of the sea using limu medicine. I'm also Kahuna Omaka, which is in the Konohiki system of using the natural rhythms and cycles of nature to rest and to look at these cycles and mimic them to increase the opportunity of abundance. And so this program, if I were to name it, it would be Ai Mahea Kawai O Kane. Where are the waters of Kane? Because our fresh water or Vai Vai is the source of our cultural practice in the Konahiki system from the mountain to the sea. It's part of the water cycle. It's part of the food chain cycle. It's part of the Konahiki system of rest and management of our cultural resources. Recently, I was asked to testify in the D.R. Horton uh, Ho'opili land development case, whereby to our surprise when I was asked to get up and testify, and I was sworn under oath, the D.R. Horton attorneys objected to my testifying after twice agreeing that I would testify in public testimony. So the chair of the Land Use Commission gave the attorneys for D.R. Horton a choice. Either allow Mr. Lee to present the material to them by tomorrow, or he would allow the agreed uh, statement that I would be able to testify in Friday's Land Use Commission. Well, they decided that they didn't want to go and have me testify without seeing and viewing the evidence that I had brought. Part of the evidence that I brought was basically a testament against D.R. Horton's Ho'opili project final FEIS, the final environmental impact statement, was grossly inadequate. It was inadequate in many ways. They basically said that there were no cultural uh, resources of Hawaiian cultural practice of Article 12, Section 7 guaranteed in the state constitution that they could find in that property area, which you would have to be actually blind not to see it. If they had bothered to go through the documentation, first the LCA maps, the Land Commission Award maps of the Great Mahele, showed that that particular area was the highest concentration of Hawaiians in the kingdom. So how did they miss that one? Also, my fourth great grand aunt, Mika Hela Kikau Onohe, was the royal patent holder of the entire Hono Uli Uli Basin of 42,000 acres, of which her LCA, or Land Commission Award, in the Ho'opili project, there were seven holdings sparse throughout the Ho'opili project. So how did they miss that one? Um, they basically missed uh, one of the biggest facts that could be found in the sites of Oahu that is found in the library. Um, and it's on page 35 on Kalo'i Gulch itself. Kalo'i. Okay. Here, Kalo'i Gulch is mentioned that um, while they were looking to start the Eva plantation, one of the problems was finding water. As uh, it's mentioned that the land is the best land for farming, but the water is subsurface in karst system or caves. And so here you have this rich farmland, and uh, Mr. Campbell was looking for the water, and they did find the water in the Kalo'i Basin system, which is the gulch that comes from the mountain where Manakapu is, all the way to the sea here at Oniula, next to Joseko's uh, project for the marina. Now what is this? This tells you that the natural springs were diverted on the mountain side for the Eva plantation in flumes, or their irrigation ditches. And they were taken throughout a system of irrigating the um, very rich land that was used for sugarcane. Now, under this system, it was very good because although they were diverting the water, they were diverting it for farm and agriculture, which means that that water percolated through the soil back into the karst system and goes back into the sea that nurtures the algae that we call limu in Hawaii, that brings in the shrimp that brings in the mollusks 
like the haukiuki or the opihi and the invertebrates, your crabs, and then a very particular uh, mollusk that grows there is called the pu'umo'o. Uh, it's called the kaita. And we use it in our mavavai ceremonies. Now this is very important to us because I have a mavavai ceremony coming up in three months. Uh, my attorney Titiana is pregnant and I said yes I'll do the mavavai ceremony for our baby. And what the mavavai means, mavavai, it talks about your path. It talks about clearing all obstacles that you have. So that when your first baby is born, there will be no obstacles in their life. They will be cleared from their path. And that future children will not have obstacles because this child has backed up in its life process. So what the Mavavai ceremony does for thousands of years that we've used it, is it allows the child to grow and develop and future siblings behind them not to be encumbered by any problems that may happen to the first child. This is of importance to us as a cultural practitioner because it's guaranteed under the state constitution, Article 12, Section 7, that the state will not overregulate or destroy any religious, cultural practice or gathering rights that we have that were instituted under my fourth great grandfather, Kamehameha III, as part of the rights and allodial land claims in the Great Mahele, that we in perpetuity have the right to continue our Hawaiian cultural practice on a regular basis for our health. As we know today, diabetes is rampant, heart disease, stroke. So what's missing in this picture is the health of the Hawaiian people, the health of our community, which when it came to eating properly, according to the chant of Kuali'i, my eighth great grandfather, the king of Oahu and Kauai in the 1600s, in this place that we call Kanihili, which is where we call uh, Barbara's Point as this little uh, section marked here. My eighth great grandfather, in line 500 of his chant, talks about him gathering lipoa and gathering limu kohu, two very important limus for our health. He also goes and it tells different the mimi crab that he gathers, a special mimi crab that is on Mount Ka'ala. It's a freshwater mimi crab, which all mimi crabs are saltwater except this one. So what we see is glimpses into our Hawaiian cultural practice that D.R. Horton somehow fell off the face of the earth. And something very important was in my contested case with Haseko on the use of Kolo'i Gulch where they wanted to build a 500 foot drainage system taking down the natural sand burn and cap rock, I said you can't do it because I as a cultural practitioner recognize in First Circuit Court to protect the limu and my cultural practice because we have ni'ihau shells there that live off the limu. We have, uh, we have mollusks and invertebrates that if this Kalo'i Gulch is not taken care of and the water runs and the siltation goes directly into the ocean, it will get into the crevices of the coral at the beach sea coast and never come out. It will destroy critical habitat. Critical habitat for an endangered species like the Hawaiian monk seal. This particular monk seal, I took a picture about 7.30 in the morning during the time that uh, we had a site visit with Dr. Maiki for the Kalo'i Gulch contested case for BLNR. And this particular monk seal, the scientist had shaved N3 to identify it. Came up at 7.30, stayed for four hours in the Kalo'i Gulch Basin area where the precise spot that he came was right here. Okay. So this is part of a continuous habitat from the mountain to the sea. We also have Hawaiian medicinal plants that we use. There are four different kinds of kauna'oa. One's from the tree, there's a mid-range kauna'oa, and there's a kauna'oa that grows right at the beach, and there's a kauna'oa limo that is in the water. Four different kauna'oas, our cultural practice. It's in the chant of Hiakapoli Pele getting lohi'au a thousand years ago. How did they miss that? Dr. Emery has it. So they didn't do their due diligence with due care and due time. It was a farce in their FEIS. 
why didn't they consult the Evalimu project, where we were recognized by the city for trying to bring back critical habitat for the limo and regeneration of the limo using our cultural practice of the limo lay and planting limo and the diversity of species of our endemic limo for Article 12, Section 7 for our cultural practice, for our health. So what is happening here? Why is D.R. Horton missing the boat when I've been recognized by the State Historic Preservation Department with the Oahu Island Burial Council to a very important Evi Kupuna that was found in the proposed Eva Marina entrance channel. This channel is found at Eva Marina, but we see here in the Cap Rock wells that many wells were, were drilled here, which is the source of that vivai, that fresh water that runs from four major sources. One, Waiholi Mountain Range, where they diverted water, but there was a natural karst there that took water from Waiholi, that they expanded it to uh, bring it from Waiholi to the surface for the sugarcane during the time of the agriculture of growing sugarcane. There's another source that we have known uh, for a long time. There are traditional burial caves as well as a water system aqueduct that starts um, on the North Shore side and from Laie, and uh, that particular cave is called Pohu Aina, and it branches out to five different areas going as far as Waimanalo. And so, and it comes into Eva as well, and it goes to Waipahu and furnishes the Waipahu stream. So we have the Wainai mountain range as one source of these underwater aqueducts. We have the northern mountains of the Ko'olau uh, mountain range that bring it, Ko'olau Ko, and then we also have uh, the Waihole mountain range. So, Ayamahea Kawai Akani, where are the waters of Kani? All over. That is the why. Up till now, we practitioners of the sea have had to educate our political leaders and our public what the value source in our culture of values are. And what they are is the foundation of the Konohiki system that increased the opportunity of abundance for our health is that we need to manage these water sources as wisely as we did when Captain Cook came to the islands in 1778 when in his journals 1.2 million Hawaiian people lived in harmony with nature from the mountains to the sea in the Konohiki system. What have we lost? Well, D.R. Horton's project is going to destroy our cultural practice. How is it going to destroy our cultural practice? They're going to need to take up all the water that's down there, leaving nothing for our limu. And not only our limu, our invertebrates, our opihi, our haukiuki, our shrimps that we have, the opailolo, the the different seaweeds that we have, that this area at Eva was, the ancient name was Haleo Limo, the house of Limo. How do you build a house of Limo without fresh water? Take away the fresh water, there is no Limo. If you have no Limo, the fish don't come in. And what do we lose? We lose a fishery. The fishery on the leeward side, is that worth the cost? And where is the protection? Where is Oha? Where is OHA protecting the native Hawaiian cultural practitioner that it was set up in Article 12, Section 1, Section 6? This says it was set up to protect us, Article 12, Section 7. Where are you? Where are you? You have to come in. Ialae, the call is coming out. Ayamahea Kawai Okane. We are here. We are strong. We are standing up. But where are you? We're standing by ourselves. Where does the Constitution mandate that? Where is your responsibility that I have to say, I am a hea ka vai vai yao o oha. Come in with us because we are protecting Article 12, Section 7. And right now it's the Sierra Club that is doing it, but we need help. The call comes out not only to oha, 
but all of you Hawaiians of the cocoa, the blood, yes, I don't look very much Hawaiian, I have one fifth Hawaiian, but Maveke Lakona, I am the keeper of our burial caves of Waipo'uli, but not just Waipo'uli, there are seven sites, seven sites of, that were put in in the uh, April 14th, 2010, Oahu Island Burial Council secret executive closed session where I outlined in a map seven of my family burial sites for over a half a mile long at Oniula. Seven karsts, seven aqueducts. Several of them are right under the Ho'opili and the rail project. This is unacceptable okay. for people to continue to buy and sell something that has no merit to it. These are unambiguous facts that I've presented. They are not hearsay. They're documented in the record. And this is what they did not want me to say. This is why they objected. This is why they said, no, he cannot come and say anything. But the voice goes out, it's time to wake up. It's stand, time to stand up. You people who are listening to me on YouTube, write to OHA. Emails show up for the Board of Trustees and the Beneficiary Concern Meetings. Let your voice be heard. This is the last stand. This is one of our most precious lands that must not be lost. It is your responsibility. We have stepped forward. We'll teach you how to do this so that in all your ahupua'as, on all neighbor islands, you can do the same thing. We want strong warriors that are going to protect our cultural practice in that traditional way of konehiki. As I have always said, I'm not a capitalist, I'm not a communist, I'm a konehikiist. And as a konehikiist, we have to endeavor to bring back that 1.2 million strong Hawaiians in health, in integrity, in value sets of pono, of taking care of the land and being good stewards, not only to the land, but in these karsara ivi kupuna, our foundation of gold, this land is built on the bones of our ancestors. And we are tasking kuleana, which means blood responsibility. It doesn't just talk to the land. It talks about what is right, what is pono. And this is the invitation, eala e, step up, stand up, be heard. We had several good young people. I applaud everybody that came to the Land Use Commission, whether it was the unions, or it was concerned citizens, or it was the 99ers or young people, I applaud all of you for going through the system and caring. This is a very important part. You must care because you can't, as the old Hawaiians used to say, let them go. We've let too much go. We must make our stand. Remember in J.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, the gray wizard, Gandalf is underneath that mountain, the karst, and he takes his his staff and the big monster, the big demon, Balaron, or Balarok, comes up, breathing fire. The developers. And then he puts his staff, you cannot pass, and he plunks it down. That's what you have to do. You have to stand up. It counts. Everyone who shows up, it counts. It really does count. It counts because we all have a testimony. We have to stand before Kiakua. And we have to say, what did we do to care for our aloha pai aina? How did we show our aloha? We have to stand up for it. In Haseko, when they talk about what I've tried to do, I am like uh, in Harry Potter, Voldemort, he who must not be mentioned. But we must mention, we must stand up, we must let our voices be heard. We have to olelo, okay? We have to speak for the land. We have to speak for the water. We have to speak for our ivikupuna, our ancestors whose voice cannot be heard from the ground anymore. But the living huina iviola, the living bones, must give voice and must stand up. Because if we don't, we will be a desert island, I guarantee you. So please, listen to the call come forth. Mahalo. If anybody would like to know any more from you, is there any way they can reach you? Yes, you can reach me at my email, kiakuas 
kahu at yahoo.com. Keakua with an S as in Sam, kahu at yahoo.com. I appreciate your listening. Please get involved. We need your help. Mahalo.